right, I'm sitting now. Ooh, my computer's about to die. Anyaseo, you are my notes. Please do not die. <laughs> Don't die on me. What's up, Crackhead Nation? It is your girl, Princess Galaxy. Why am I like doing <laughs> And today I'm going to be telling you how to actually survive a K-pop concert. So if you do not know me and what I do, I basically talk about um, all of my experience from the 30 plus concerts that I've been to. Actually, I think it's almost 30. I don't think it's 30 plus, but you get what I'm saying. I've been to a lot of concerts and specifically K-pop concerts. Previous videos I've made, I've talked about how to get K-pop concert tickets and what to bring to a K-pop concert, how to emotionally prep for it because it's an emotional experience for sure. And today I'm going to be teaching you what to do at the concert. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more crackhead K-pop content based around K-pop concerts and vlogs. So uh, let's, let's get it and get into it. So this is before the concert, like the day of you wake up, what do you do, princess help me? So first is the checklist. So if you guys don't know, in the last video I came out with on what to actually bring to a K-pop concert, I created a checklist for you guys to look at and like review before the concert starts. And I created like Instagram post versions and lock screen versions. So if you guys wanna share those around with your friends, I don't care. Um, I made them for people to actually like, you know, be helped by. And those will be on my Instagram and Twitter. So I'll be linking those in the description below. So when it comes to what to wear, you really wanna wear something that's comfortable and that you're able to move around in. I totally understand wanting to look cute for like a big event like bts but you really do have to like incorporate comfort into your look or you're gonna be miserable i've seen so many girls i've been to so many concerts where girls are like you know like they're in heels they're in like short skirts and like they look cute but like they look uncomfortable and it's like the whole the whole point of like you going to a concert at least for me it's like you know have fun like let loose like be like woo you know like it's so cool like you know just go crazy because me at concerts i go crazy this is what i sound like so yeah i like to be comfortable for every concert i usually wear like a large t-shirt like an oversized shirt and like shorts because like those are things that like are really comfortable to me i don't really wear jeans or like leggings jeans are fine but leggings is like i've worn leggings to a concert and they were just terrible they were also nylon so like it makes sense why they were very uncomfortable but i would personally recommend that you wear like something short especially for a lot of these um concert dates are gonna be in like the spring to like summertime so just like correlate with the weather if you know it's gonna be like cold around 7 p.m like in like the city like wear a sweatshirt you know what i mean like just conform to the conform to the weather but also make sure that you're comfortable so if you're planning on wearing things like jewelry i really recommend that you don't wear like big hoops or anything or like really long necklaces i do feel like if you're trying to dance and stuff like it could really get in the way and it's just like kind of like a burden if you're like going to a concert and it's like woo like the whole point is to get hype and you're like you know so all this is based around comfort and like you know movability so for makeup i usually wear minimal makeup kind of like this would be like what i'm wearing it probably doesn't look like minimal makeup but i basically spot conceal like i spot correct with like the same concealer color as my skin so basically when it comes to makeup you want to make sure that it's like not a lot but if you want to go all out if you want to wear it like that's what i'm saying like i'm not restricting you but it's like think about what you're gonna actually be doing like if you're gonna be crying you need to have waterproof everything so if it's gonna be raining or storming or if it's gonna have like a high like chance of rain definitely bring a poncho and this is for all those night two people for soldier field um that was terrible it was cold af and if you did not bring a poncho i'm sorry you can also probably buy a poncho at like the stadium but it's probably gonna be like ten dollars and it's just a piece of plastic girl so don't do it just bring a poncho all this is just based on like looking at the weather and being comfortable so there's no need to really overthink it but plan your outfits be cute you know just make sure that they're comfortable so the next part is basically what time do i have to be there so you know obviously you want to know when you have to be there so you won't miss anything or you know stuff like that so this mainly depends on if you have like a certain type of ticket like a vip or sound check or if you just have like a normal like seated seat without like any extra perks you're just like you just gotta take it you know nothing else if you have a normal ticket you can basically just stick to the time that they say that the doors open usually this will be on your ticket stub like on your ticket or it will be on like the website for the concert and i've been getting this question so much about like getting in line first and all this stuff so 
when you get in line, like there's no reason to rush, okay? Like for like just seats, like when you're going in, like for the actual concert, there's no need to rush because you already have your ticket. So basically that means that, you know, if you have a seat, no one's gonna take your seat. Everyone already has an assigned seat. So you don't have to be like the first person in the line. You don't have to rush unless you're like really excited and like go off, you know? But otherwise there's no need to rush here. So I'm gonna talk about sound check real quick. Okay, stands, stop the freaky presses. So just as I was editing this video, we got information from Ticketmaster's blog or, or as what I like to call them, the trash blog on, <laughs> sorry, on ticket prices for the tour. So it says ticket prices for this tour will be available at the following price points. And it ranges from 60 USD to 200 and 75 USD and 65 Canadian to $325 Canadian and there will be two sound check packages the first one is gold which is going to be $445 Woo! yes I fainted while saying that too and for Toronto it will be $545 Canadian so the benefits will be the gold sound package and you'll have access to the sound check in premium viewing one top price seated ticket gold sound check package, limited edition merch line, and limited edition merch, and early entry into the venue, a laminate and lanyard, of course, for your neck. <laughs> Did you see my neck? And designated chicken and on-site event staff. And the silver is basically the same, except you don't get the premium viewing. You just get like the, the basic access to artist sound check, which I'm assuming means that you're probably like in a different section or something or you're probably not as close to the stage as like the gold people. So I just wanted to put this in there, like in the video, even though like it's not exactly about it, but you know, I thought you guys would enjoy that info while I'm telling it to you from your beautiful ears. Okay, bye. So if you have sound check, they will most likely be sending you an email or like you'll be getting some information on what time to actually be at the venue so that you can get your wristband and everything like that. Be there on time. Please be at Soundcheck on time. You have no idea how many people I've seen where they literally don't get into Soundcheck because they're not there on time and they're like last. So please just listen to the ticket people, okay? <laughs> they know what they're doing, they're there for a reason. Also, times may depend on the venue. So this is a lot of the reason why a lot of people come to me confused. Like one video told me this time, the time was 2 p.m. One video told me the time was 4 p.m. So it really all depends on the venue. I saw Blackpink on their, in their area, in their area, girl, it's in your area. Area, you're in Blackpink. So I remember doing soundtrack. I actually had a VIP ticket for the Chicago date and it was hell, um, it was pretty terrible. There's so many moving pieces behind the scenes. You know, it's kind of like why concerts don't start exactly at the time all the time. Like say if a concert says, oh, we start at 7.30, they're probably gonna start at like 8.15. Like, I mean, that's just like most concerts I've been to. So it's like, whatever. So it's a similar thing. There's so many moving parts for every single venue. There's different security teams for each one. You know, there's so many things go down. And so really it all depends on what you're being told when you get your ticket and the information that you receive from Live Nation or whatever company they're going through with. So I'm gonna talk about Barricade for a second because I, we just need to talk about this. So a lot of people have been asking me about Barricade. Oh my God, Princess, please, like I need Barricade. Like I need, like how can I get in the line faster? You know, things like that. Okay, here's the thing about Barricade. So Barricade implies that there is general admission for the floor. There is no GA for the floor. There is no general admission for any of BGS's tour dates. Even though we have not gotten the maps yet for the tour dates, that does not matter, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter because they did not do it last year for the Speak Yourself tour and they're not doing it again. The only time they've ever done like a, a floor type of system where it's just like, free for all like general admission was for MetLife. I'm pretty sure that was the only time and that was for the Love Yourself tour. And I really do feel like that venue, like that scheduling for that particular MetLife um, venue was rushed. Like that was a really a fluke because most of the time, like nine times out of 10, there's no general admission. The whole entire floor of the stadium will be seated. Everyone will have an assigned seat. So you can technically say that Barricade will be a seat by the stage but then again it's not like a free-for-all type of thing where 
it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna get as close as I can. I'm gonna smush up with somebody. Like, that's not how this works. So I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer on that. There is no general admission, so there's no need to try to like get there super duper early unless you're doing soundtrack. And soundtrack is a whole nother beast on its own. So the next thing you're gonna wanna have and or prep for is the food and drink. Like I talked about in my last video, it's really important that you kind of like understand like this stuff, you know, like want to make sure that you're not going to be hungry and anxious because the whole day, like, like, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you're going to be anxious that whole day. But this isn't a bad thing. This isn't like, oh, what's wrong with me? Like everyone's anxious. Everyone's excited. Everyone's happy. Literally an hour before every concert, I'm just like, it hits me. Like, I'm like, oh, Taeyong is right there. He's going to be right there. We're going to be breathing the same oxygen. Like, it's crazy. So please make sure that even if you're not like that hungry, like I'm gonna sound like your old like grandma or something, even if you're not that hungry, you should still have something. Even if like, don't have like a burger or something, like, you know, get like a snack, you know, just something on your stomach so that after the concert, you won't be like wanting to faint or die because um, for black pink, I didn't eat nothing that whole day and I had to pee before the concert started and I was already up there by the stage and I did not want to move. So yeah, learn from me. <laughs> And then next step is to get in line. So it really depends on when you want to get in line. For BTS, um, like for Soldier Field for BTS upcoming tour, the concert starts at 7.30. So they're most likely open doors around. Um, I couldn't see them being later than six, but maybe like 5.30 or six o'clock. So now we are in the venue. <laughs> I love it. We love to see it. This is where my anxiety starts. <laughs> so after you get into the venue, what I usually do is that I immediately go to the merch. <laughs> immediately because i do not like seeing those merch um things right before the concert or like right after because those be insane like i do not feel like like after imagine trying to get merch after the concert you're already tired you want to go home get it before the concert even starts so that you can spend all your energy being like focus on the task at hand which is daddy Young. i mean bcs but you know like me like daddy Taeyong. so basically you can use the bathroom before or after you get merch. But I would usually get into the venue, get merch, and then go to the bathroom and then go to my seat. Or you can, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you can go to your seat first, you can get merch first. It all just depends, but you would do these things around this time after you get into the venue. Also another important thing that a lot of people don't mention is don't try to leave the venue. So if you forgot something, oh well. You need to stay in there because they already scanned your ticket and if you try to, if you like leave and come back in, you most likely won't be able to come in because they already scanned your ticket. So they're gonna think that like you stole a ticket or something and then it's gonna be tragic. I've heard people going through this. And I just feel so bad for them. So please stay in the venue. This is why I have the checklist that you guys can look in the description for because I wanna make sure that everyone's getting like, you know, what they need to get, so. For your light stick and army bomb, make sure that you've connected it and synced it to your seat number and everything through the official app. Or if you don't feel like downloading the official app because you want to save storage checklist baby you can either go to one of the booths at the stadium and they usually have like a handful of them i'm not sure exactly how many but they have them like usually on the north and south sides of the stadium and they'll just do it for you basically so when you're getting to your seat and you're looking for your seat you can just ask the people there i mean they work there you know, you don't need to try to figure it out, you know, because then you're going to be doing some extra walking. And then if you're not in the right section, then you have to go all the way across the stadium. Then you have to do this. It's just like, I've already exerted so much emotional, physical, and just spiritual energy on this day. I'm going to ask someone where my seat is and where my section is so that I can actually get there as soon as possible and know where I am. So you can either do that or like look at the signs, but you know i would just ask people if you've been to the stadium so many times like me i've been to soldier field so many times and i'm literally obsessed with soldier field i don't know what it is about that freaking stadium but i don't even like the bears i don't even like the bears but i just love that stadium so like i don't know i do have precious memories from seeing one direction there so maybe that's why so once you're in your seat you can have the opportunity to talk to people like as they come like into the section or like as they like you know everyone starts like getting to the stadium i think it's really fun this is probably my favorite part because like this is the easiest thing to do like talking to people is so 
easy especially at concerts and like bts like k-pop concerts in general because it's like everyone there is usually like really friendly i've never met a single mean person at a k-pop concert and not just because i'm an extrovert and it's just naturally easier for me to interact and talk to like strangers i really do think that at k-pop concerts like if you're an introvert this one's for you so it's time for you to speak yourself speak your truth and talk to people if that's what you want to do i'm not trying to force you to do nothing but this is probably the best place that you're going to be able to talk to people with so much ease because it's like think about it we're all there for seven people like we're all there for bts so the or like whatever group you're going to so the fact that like it makes it so much easier you can literally just be like hey when did you start listening to bts and then it just goes downhill from there i mean in a good way it goes like you know like roller coaster like woo, you know and then you're gonna be able to like have fun with each other so i really recommend talking to people don't be afraid everyone else is already anxious just as anxious as you they probably all went through the same process of trying to get tickets and everything so the fact that you're like there and you're talking to them that makes them feel a lot less like you know alone and so you know you never walk alone <laughs> BTS reference, I'm funny. Also, just a side note, I've never had this happen to me, thank God, at a concert. But if someone's like harassing you or like you see something that just doesn't seem right, like you usually know like in your gut, like if something just doesn't look right, it doesn't seem to seem right. Or if someone like is in your seat and like they might see and they like will ignore you or something, you can just call security. It's not really a big deal. They'll, they'll figure everything out for you. Most of the time people will just move, you know, it's not like a big thing, but if it gets to that point, and if you feel uncomfortable by someone, please make sure to call security. The whole point of you being at the concert is for you to have fun, let go, and feel free. That's what they're there for. They're there to protect a you. You a civilian. They that's their job. So <laughs> and this is my favorite part. Oh my god. So the concert has begun, okay? Um, first of all, I just want to say, um, cry. Just cry. Um, <laughs> just express all the emotions. The tears, the, the screaming, everyone's going through the same thing, okay? Just let it all out. No reason to feel ashamed. Just dance around, jump around, do what you need to do. Cry, lay on the floor and cry. Don't, don't lay in the um, aisle or someone will tell you to move. But like lay on the ground, like just do what you need to do to get all your energy out because <laughs> that's what i do and don't feel ashamed of that okay, you're finally here like enjoy yourself don't feel any remorse or don't feel bad about anything like being able to go to the concert is already so awesome and now you're there and you can cry and do whatever you want with etiquette and i'm gonna tell you that right now concert etiquette is basically don't push people okay like you can be loud you can jump around have fun you know like be a fangirl, be a fanboy, whatever you want to do. But just make sure that you're not like pushing people around and stuff like that. Kind of like stay in your lane, you know? Second thing is basically don't stand on your chair. Like if you are a short person, do not get a floor seat. Like I, <laughs> I, I'm not saying this to be like mean. I'm saying this because I genuinely want you to like actually be able to see. I have like, I have short friends who like they got floor seats and they were like, I didn't enjoy that at all. <laughs> and I'm just like, it sucks because it's like, you know, you get a floor seat and you're like, oh my God, like, blah, blah, blah. but it's like, it's not even worth it. Especially if you're like far away and you're like short. Girl, get a hundred section seat or get a seat right next to the stage. It's one or the other. Like, I'm just saying that on behalf of short queens and kings everywhere. Look, I can't change your height, but I can help you change your experience. That's all I have to say. Next thing is don't hold up like huge signs okay in front of people blocking their view it's rude <laughs> it's very rude if you do have a sign though and if you're like in the hundreds or two hundreds like in the bowl section which is basically like every place that isn't the floor then it's fine to like hold a sign in front of you like in front of your body but don't hold it up like this now the concert is over <laughs> So it's okay to cry after the concert. This whole process has been just so emotionally draining for everyone. It is totally normal. It's totally okay to cry and have post-concert depression. And if you guys don't know, post-concert depression is evil. And it's basically, you know, it's pretty obvious. Depression that you get after a concert, you realize that it's over and you're just like, you get this sinking feeling and you're like, I've invested months of my life in preparing for this and now it's over 
And that is why I saw Super M five times because I just could not stand not seeing them more than once. <laughs> Keep talking about my checklist, but in the last video I talked about understanding and learning how you're going to be able to leave a concert, which is like transportation. So like I said, check out that checklist for that. So basically this is the point where you're going to want to use that information. So here's what I do, especially if I'm going with a handful of people and we all have like different seats around the arena or stadium, what I will do is I will, or like we will basically set up a place outside of the venue, outside of the stadium or the arena that we can all walk, that we can all walk to, meet up there, like a meetup spot, and then go on our way all together. Getting an Uber after a concert is probably one of the worst things you could do because they're like hella expensive. So I would recommend like walking a little bit and then maybe getting an Uber, but or a lift and I have like a code for um, $5 off your lift in the description. But basically like you're better off maybe doing one beforehand and then walking a little bit after and then getting a lift or Uber. Just a tip. So it's really important, like I said, to have a place outside of the venue that you can meet up because the thing about when the concert's over is that immediately, immediately the staff and the security are trying to get out like 60,000 people out of like a football field basically. So a lot of times the security and the staff will close off certain sections of the stadium. So if you said, okay, I'm gonna meet you guys in like the, I don't know why you would say this, but like the North Gate staircase, there's probably like a million staircases, so it doesn't matter. But if you guys, hey, I'm gonna meet at North Gate, like that's probably gonna be closed. So make sure you have a place outside the stadium that you guys can meet at and then walk together. So if you guys don't know the area in which you're going to be at, I really recommend going into Google Maps and finding local landmarks around you. Like for example, Soldier Field, north of Soldier Field is actually, hold on, let me show you. So basically what I do is I go on Google Maps and I look at nearby landmarks by my stadium. For example, for Soldier Field right here, um, Soldier Field is actually south of the Field Museum. So let me show you guys, here's Soldier Field and here's the Field Museum. So if you zoom in, you can go down to the street level view and look at places nearby. So what I would do, like I did last year, I said, okay guys, let's meet at the Field Museum North. You know, even if your exit is in the South, you can still go to the North. So you walk to the North of the stadium and then we meet at like this, the end of this ledge right here. So even if there are other people that are meeting in your same spot, you still will be able to recognize each other and you guys will all have a space where you can meet up. So it won't take like, an hour for you guys to like find each other and then try to call each other on the phone and be like hey where are you and you can barely hear them because everyone's like loud and trying to get merch and then peeing and then someone's crying about how sexy Joan Cook was and it's just like I went through this last year and it, it was just traumatizing so like a belief though put yourself through this so find a location that is outside the arena or stadium and just meet up there. So that is how to survive a K-pop concert. I really hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like it. It really helps me. Um, it really helps me out my channel and subscribe for more crackhead K-pop content. And here's my favorite comment from last week. It's pretty great. And here's my favorite meme of this past week. And I will be seeing you at the concert. Just kidding, I'll be seeing you this Friday. Bye! <laughs> I'll be seeing you next Friday. Bye! Also follow me on Instagram and Twitter for the checklist.